In this final segment on the central nervous system overview, let us consider few basic details about diencephalon and cerebrum. Diencephalon is made up of two main parts, pars dorsalis which is in turn made up of thalamus and epithalamus and pars ventralis which is in turn made up of hypothalamus and subthalamus. Pars dorsalis and pars ventralis are separated by hypothalamic sulcus. Thalamus forms the largest part of diencephalon and it forms a gateway for all the cortical inputs except for olfactory pathway. It helps as a sensory relay center and also influences motor and emotional responses. It's an oval shaped structure divided by a Y-shaped internal medullary lamina into three nuclear groups, anterior, medial and lateral. The lateral nuclear group is further divided into a posterior pulvinar and a lateral dorsal and the ventral tears. The dorsal tears and ventral tears are further subdivided into multiple smaller nuclei of which at this point of time we will be concerned with two nuclei VPL and VPM that is ventral posterior lateral and ventral posterior medial parts. Cerebrum forms the highest center for conscious awareness of all the sensations or perception of all the sensations. It also helps in initiation of movements, language and speech and executive functions. Cerebrum has an outer cortex or grey matter and inner core of white matter. Each cerebral hemisphere has three surfaces, a superior lateral surface which is just inside the cranial vault a medial surface which faces the opposite cerebral hemisphere and an inferior surface which rests on the floor of cranial cavity. Similar to cerebellum, cerebral cortex is also thrown into folds to increase the surface area and the surface depressions caused are called as sulci and the elevations are called as gyri or gyrus for singular. Let us now consider few features of superior lateral surface of cerebral hemisphere. Two major sulci which are seen on this surface are posterior ramus of lateral sulcus and central sulcus of Rolando. Two other features which we will be interested at this point of time are the posterior upturned parieto occipital sulcus which is about 5 cm anterior to the occipital pole on the superior border. Similarly, 5 cm anterior to the occipital pole on the inferolateral border is a small depression called as preoccipital incisor. Using these four landmarks, we can mark the four lobes on this superolateral surface. First, let us join the preoccipital incisor with the parieto occipital sulcus by an imaginary line. Next, we draw another imaginary line joining the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus with the first. The area now in front of the central sulcus and above the posterior ramus which is the anterior most area that is the frontal lobe. The area behind the central sulcus above the posterior ramus and in front of the first imaginary line is the parietal lobe. Area below the posterior ramus is the temporal lobe and area behind the first imaginary line is the occipital lobe. Running anterior and parallel to the central sulcus is the precentral sulcus and the area between precentral sulcus and the central sulcus is called as precentral gyrus. Now this precentral gyrus is the primary motor area or Brodmann's area number 4. Similarly, running posterior and parallel to the central sulcus is the postcentral sulcus and the area between central sulcus and postcentral sulcus is the postcentral gyrus. This is the primary somesthetic area or Brodmann's area number 312. Each cerebral hemisphere has a C shaped lateral ventricle, and the two lateral ventricles communicate with the third ventricle. Third ventricle, as you know, is a cavity of diencephalon. So it is flanked on either side by the thalamus and below the thalamus we have the hypothalamus and subthalamus. 
buried in the depth of cerebral hemispheres is also a collection of grey matter called as basal ganglia but as we know ganglia is a misnomer here because it refers to collection of neurons outside the central nervous system these are better named as basal nuclei they include a c-shaped caudate nucleus globus pallidus putamen both globus pallidus and putamen together form a lens shaped structure called as lentiform nucleus this caudate nucleus lentiform nucleus and few other structures in the midbrain and diencephalon together are concerned with motor functions they all will be clubbed or grouped under basal nuclei they help in selecting appropriate movements and suppressing inappropriate or unwanted movements so any injury to these structures will result in the opposite action that is we either get a set of unwanted movements like chorea or balismus or the required movements will be suppressed or reduced which we call as bradykinesia a classic feature of parkinsonism let us now look into the white matter of cerebrum it is made up of three different types of fibers one set of fibers connect one area of the cerebral hemisphere with another area of the same cerebral hemisphere such fibers are called as association fibers second type of fibers connect one area of one cerebral hemisphere with a similar area on the opposite cerebral hemisphere such fibers are called as commissural fibers corpus callosum is one of the largest commissural fiber group the third group of fibers connect cerebral cortex with other areas or other centers in the central nervous system these are called as projection fibers they involve include both corticofugal fibers and corticopetal fibers that is all the fibers reaching the cortex or leaving the cortex what you are seeing here is the largest such fiber bundle called as internal capsule it is located between the thalamus and the lentiform nucleus and this forms the area through which all the fibers reaching the cerebral cortex or leaving the cerebral cortex to other lower centers will be passing through thank you very much you can visit this site for